these fish are ancient. They have seen glaciers come and go. They've been here for millions of years. It's some of the oldest life forms on the planet. And we're using some of the most innovative and cutting edge technology to better understand them out of a place of respect and appreciation so that we can do what we can to conserve and, and restore these populations. The brook trout is the only native trout species to the Appalachian region. It has swam in the rivers and streams of the Eastern Americas for millions of years. In addition to its cultural and economic significance, the brook trout has also become an important species for environmental conservation. They are used as an indicator of cold water. So they're a cold water species. So knowing where the fish are, the brook trout are now, knowing where they will be in the future is really important for land protection and for conservation. It's the canary in the coal mine for climate change in Appalachian streams. Studying the migration of fish has always been a challenge. In order to keep track of individual fish, researchers have traditionally used what are known as pit tags. These tags must be surgically implanted into each fish for tracking. This can be a time-consuming and expensive project, not to mention uncomfortable for the fish. However, researchers at the UVA School of Data Science have teamed up with experts at the U.S. Geological Survey to develop a new approach to tracking individual fish. Utilizing computer vision and machine learning techniques, the researchers have developed methods for identifying a fish from a single image. Once implemented, this new technique will reduce the need for pit tags and facilitate the expansion of ecological research around the globe. So this project is about uh, fish recognition, and uh, we try to develop new AI methods to achieve robust and accurate recognition at the individual level. This is quite different from previous work because previous work is mainly focused on recognizing fish at the species level. At the beginning, we analyzed the fish images and uh, tried to identify interesting visual patterns which can distinguish fish individuals. When we have the raw image of the fish, we do not know how to extract the features from the images. And uh, we have no idea what part of the information is useful to us. But luckily we have the collaborators from the USGS and they are the expert. There are a couple of benchmarks that we use morphologically on the body of these fish. One is the lateral line. This is a, a sensory organ on the side of fish, and you can see it as a small line in the middle of the side of the fish. And on the lateral line, you'll typically see large oval-shaped dark circles. Those are called par marks. Those are generally visible in younger life, life stages. And then you'll see pigmentation spots on top of those par marks. So that gives us several layers of information that we can use to fingerprint these fish, essentially. As you can see here from this figure, we have the pattern print features, the dot patterns on fish body, and then our model is able to extract the features from the fish body. Based on that, we design a new fusion framework which can leverage both the RGB images and the converted images which highlight the pigmentation feature together so that the overall recognition performance could be improved. When we get to our sampling site, what we'll first do is we'll gather all our gear, get all, make sure we have everything set to go down to the brook. We will uh, put together our backpack electrofisher, which we use to collect the fish, and then we'll systematically work up our section, left to right through the stream. All the fish that we catch go into a bucket. Once we have all the fish collected at the end of the section, we will go up to our tagging table, and then we'll systematically go through putting three fish at a time into the anesthetic. Once they're knocked out, we take those fish, put them on a the measuring board, and we'll measure the fork length of the fi each individual fish to the nearest millimeter. When that's done, we flip the board over and we'll take a digital photo from our, our phones. That's done, the fish goes in a recovery bucket and we will do this through however many fish we have for that section. When the fish are all recovered, those fish go back to the stream and we release them to where, from roughly the spot where we caught them in the stream.
first thing that we did is we um, grabbed the fish from the holding tank um, with our nets and we carefully brought them over to another um, large stream-like tank um, that allows us to get GoPro footage of the fish um, kind of in a natural um, posture setting with the GoPro. So we took the we took photos on a burst setting in order to capture them in different poses, different um, different angles for the AI project. Once we have those photos, we remove the trout from the pool and put it in an anesthetizing tank, which slowly puts it to sleep. And once it's nice and drowsy, we can take it out and then we get length and weight for that individual, which was previously put in and then we move them over to a board where we took a photo of them um, with, the same, with the same GoPro and we basically had them facing on their left side so it's all consistent throughout every single fish. Um, and then we move them over to the recovery tank. And this is our Intel Fish Identification Framework. We have the first part as the region of interest extraction from input image. And second part is to extract the grayscale pigmentation pattern. And the last one is to fuse the features from both channels. Finally, we can perform recognition of the individual. Results show that our model performed quite well, especially comparing with the standard computer vision and the deep learning models. So the reason that we're excited about this project is that we think it's truly transformative. It could truly transform the way that we do fisheries biology, fisheries management worldwide. And not just that, we think it could transform the way that people appreciate these resources and respect these places and become more aware of things like climate change in their backyards. This has the potential to do those things. So being able to, uh, to identify individuals and use population models that are based on individual identification, or in individual ID, lets us do a whole new class of models that are much more sensitive and much, we can do a much better job identifying drivers of population dynamics like changes in temperature and changes in flow. So we want to be able to identify places that are considered climate refugia. So these, these are streams that are going to be particularly resilient to climate change. And this mostly has to do with increasing temperature and increasing variability in precipitation. The challenge is, so this stream that we're at is called the Westbrook, and we studied this stream since 1997 with physical tags. It's a really long time, it's a ton of money, it's a ton of expense, it's really hard to do these, these physical tagging studies. Imagine we could have anglers out there or other people that can catch fish, taking pictures of fish and getting information on individuals in a whole bunch of places. So we envision, ultimately, uh, a system for crowdsourcing big data in the places that people care about and using those data to estimate things that they care about, such as population trends, abundance, et cetera. Ultimately, where we think this could go is for video sampling, where individual fish could be monitored in real environments, in real streams. So imagine we had a whole bunch of video cameras set out in the stream here, combine that with individual identification, basically get a real-time continuous census of the population, that would change everything in how we, how we monitor populations. In the future, we have several directions to further explore this project. The first one is to expand our framework to dealing with other species of fish. The second direction is to leverage large-scale models, such as large foundation models, to improve the detection, segmentation, and recognition of fish. And the third one is to develop open source software and contribute to the community. You know, a lot of people are um, skeptical of AI or afraid of what it could do. I think the more we have projects like this that show the value for conservation, uh, the value for stewardship and management of these resources, the better off we're going to be and the better off that AI can be in society.